As you can see, the next topic is the orthodox view on victory and defeat in war. Three of us are authors, Borisov Grozdic, Ilya Kaitens, and I. I will speak this time. And the topic is a little bit strange, but we hope we will make a small contribution to the topic which is on the table during this conference. Here we can see the content of this speech after the introduction. There will be uh, several parts, namely Lord Savo, the decisive factor of war, win with this, the most powerful weapon of Christian victors, the goal of war, for what and for who is a life worth giving for in war, tension between victory and honest struggle, the orthodox solution, and at the end we could see conclusion for that discussion. Among many questions of Christian ethics regarding war and warfare, which are waiting to be understood from the orthodox standpoint, the questions of victory and defeat, crucial elements that define war, are notably interesting and significant. Modern armed conflicts are making them even more essential, and the orthodox philosophical and theological thought is unable to keep track with the challenges of war that the Orthodox world is facing. Christian ethics understand, understands morale as realization of God's will in the manner explained in the scripture, sacred tradition, and the life of the church. It is considered that a man comprehends the will of God in two ways. First, based on his inner being, and second, by revelation and positive commandments announced by God. Christians do not have a singular view on which authority can interpret the will of God. There are differences between the Orthodox, Catholics, and Protestants. In Roman Catholicism, it's the Pope. In Protestantism, special interpreters of the Bible, and uh, the Orthodox recognizes three authorities. The scripture that is interpreted by uh, literally and argument are often bound in specific parts of the Bible and characteristics views of church holy fathers. Secondly, the institutions of the church, bishops individually or through conciliar, and thirdly, clergymen who using their clairvoyance and the gift of judgment can authoritatively uh, indicate what is right and what is wrong. Our view will be closest to the first type of understanding of authorities in orthodoxy and the ideas, beliefs, and values regarding victory and defeat in war are mostly going to be reconstructed based on opinions found in the scripture, both New and Old Testament. The Bible describes extensive number of wars and holds vast experience on their causes, victories, and defeats. Besides using the scripture, we will attempt to reach the orthodox view on victory and defeat in war by relying on the teaching of Holy Fathers, canons of the Orthodox Church, hagiographic writings of Orthodox saints, insights of Orthodox theologists and philosophers, and uh, the official views and uh, practices of local Orthodox churches. The orthodox view on the phenomena of war has its own peculiarities 
and offers a number of different answers compared to the Roman Catholicism and Protestantism. There is no absolute opposition to war in orthodoxy. Following orthodoxy debunks and rejects the idea of a united global state which would dispute the right to defend of each separate nation or an armed conflict among relatively equal sides and leave the armed interventions to the police actions of such state. In the orthodox traditions and beliefs, we do not find concepts of holy wars, good wars and justified wars, or the argument for the crusades. Orthodoxy views war as a necessity in certain situation in order to protect the innocent and to stop of our larger evil. In essence, war is considered as an evil, great evil. Murder, is, uh, murder in war cannot be considered morally just, sinless and an act of justice. The canons of the Orthodox Church only sanction such an act differently, condemn it, which remains in the Orthodox spirit and tradition even today. Uh, that is why we fail to find a formulation of terms for engaging a war, use ad bellum, which justifies it. And we could say that orthodoxy never evolved the theory of a just war. From the perspective of modern philosophy and science, orthodox view can truly appear as a myth, a legend, a fairy tale, imagination, numerous prejudice, superstition, with no philosophical and scientific value. However, to put it mildly, it is frivolously to consider the modern rational system of ideas and values to be absolutely privileged and not to consider everything outside of it to be darkness, barbarity, and superstition. Julius Evola points out this great uh, contrast between modern and traditional world, modern and traditional man, in contrast that is spiritual, idealistic, and metaphysic. Modern civilization negates the tr traditional spirit, negates the simultaneous existence of two orders, physical and metaphysical. Therefore, the orthodox view is at least entitled to a legitimate coexistence with other views, even if it consider or remnant of warrior idealism. Lord Sabo, the decisive factor of war. When it comes to war, the leading idea which comes from the Old Testament is that God Lord Sabaoth governs war and peace. Sabaoth is the Greek form of the Hebrew word Sabaoth, army, and hence Yahweh Sabaoth is translated as Lord of the armies. We find in the Old Testament almost 300 times and uh, signifies God as a commander of heavenly armies. Everything regarding war is in God's hands. War starts as God wills it, and uh, his will decides whether we are victorious or not. With his help, much stronger enemy can be defeated. The biblical understanding of God's power is that it is absolute, greatest, first, almighty, eternal, and invisible. To rely on God's power actually means to rely on the greatest absolute power. 
Uh, the first murder, not war, described in the Bible is Cain murdering Abel. Envy is the cause. Cain does not kill the brother in the battle for survival, but for the game of evil passions. Because God favor Abel's gift over Cain's. Uh, envy is condemned in every religion, cultures, and languages as something uh, unpleasant, devastating, and negative. We can find that political and, and, so, and solution, uh, social conflicts are understood through uh, this phenomena in orthodoxy. As a spiritual case, orthodoxy sees the root of political conflicts in envy which is followed by specific political causes. One of the most striking examples from the Bible, which testifies about uh, how victory in war belongs to the Almighty God, is the example of Moses bringing Jews from Egypt to Hanan and uh, conflicting with the Emperor Amalek. One of the most important ideas that comes out of the scripture is that no danger is so great that God cannot help you, nor there an enemy, no matter how powerful, that can win without the grace of God. Win win this, uh, words of Emperor Constantine. The most powerful weapon of Christian victor. The, victorious, the victory of Emperor Constantine over Maxentius at the bridge of Milvi, not far from Rome, in the year 312, is a permanent example and uh, eternal inspiration for Christians. Fearful outnumber with the knowledge that it takes more than manpower and resources and that he need more help from above, Constantine prayed to the God. The next day, on his way to Rome, he saw a cross made of stars in the sky uh, that shined brighter than the sun, and on the cross was written, win with this. The next day, Lord Jesus Christ spoke to him and told him, make a cross like this and uh, order it to be carried in front of your armies and you will be victorious, not only against Maxentius, but uh, all, all your enemies. Christians were, uh, that were close to him understood the symbol as a symbol of immortality and triumph over death. The biggest and the most important victory is the over death, the victory of Christ. Constantine ordered for a cross made of gold, pearls, and gems to be placed on war flags. After the victory of, over Maxentius, uh, Constantine was convinced that the victory was made possible with the help of God, so he ordered his soldiers to read a prayer every week and gathered Christian priest to introduce him to Christianity. Since October 312, Emperor Constantine regarded himself uh, the servant of God who is on the mission uh, from God to convert the Roman Empire to Christianity. Uh, that is a very interesting part of Christian history because in time Christians became majority in states so the church had to be politically responsible. Responsibility and successfulness start to function as ethical principles demanding of Christians not to be neutral in regards to the changes in the world. Since Constantine the Great uh, Christians have accepted the criteria of political reality and uh, successfulness when they considering the use of force. It was established uh, that nonviolence simply does not work and that Christians have to act 
realistically and responsibly. If Christians do not use force when necessary, they will no longer be just or free because there will, there will be no Christians. During a thousand years long history of Byzantine, the understanding of war changed from only defensive to the request for reclaiming lost territories. The Crusades started and conducted by the Pope show a great and essential difference between Catholic and Orthodox understandings of war. The understanding of war, Byzantines, uh, that uh, war is a matter of rulers, not the church, led to seeing Crusades as uh, sacrilegious acts of Roman popes and the uh, usurpation of government by the church. Numerous Catholic priests took part in the Crusades. Such thing was unacceptable for the church in Byzantine, and it was forbidden for priests and other clergymen to carry weapons. Absolution of sins in advance, which was promised to the Catholic Crusaders, was unthinkable in the eyes of Byzantines, and it was incompatible with the Eastern Christianity. Absolution of sins in orthodoxy in advance has never been noted. Modern armed conflicts don't have the character of holiness for Christians, which wars uh, in the past had. When weapons and equipment were sanctified, icons were carried in front of armies, and the wars were waged for the defense of orthodox religion and fatherland. Nikolai Berdyaev said that modern wars more and more resemble the clashes of criminal gangs and no chivalry contest. We find permanent beliefs that war and peace happen by providence or by will and the permission of God. The defeated and the victor or the final outcome of war and the, any other form of political conflict is in the end of the God's hand. In the core of this belief is the grasp that God has unlimited absolute power, or man is not given the power to foresee the act of God, precisely because of this feeling of dependence on God, omnipotence, which can help or hinder man in war or some other form of political conflict, man try to influence it, to control it with certain acts and behavior, like uh, prayer, life, confession, fast, repentance. In orthodox iconography, orthodox rulers are often depicted as they are receiving weapons from heavens, from angels or Archangel Michael. How important uh, was victory? We can deduct from the prayer books where we can find prayers for sanctification of military flag and blessing an army for war, blessing military weapons, blessing of worship, and the soldiers and others. And also an interesting uh, constatation that we can find texts uh, about Christ's loving army. And the question is, why is the church praying for a Christ's loving army when the task of an army is to plan and prepare a war, destruction, killing? and uh, bloodshed, all the things uh, opposite to the teaching and the life of Christ. Uh, a Russian uh, philosopher, Ilyin, responds to that question in uh, his article about Christ loving army. Uh, but there are wars that are spiritually just and morally necessary. Those are the wars that the church refers to 
when praying for the Christ loving army and the warrior if he is a Christian believer cannot be separated uh, from Christ in any work of moment of his life even then uh, when in military duty he goes to war and battles and he will not be worthy of his soldier title if he battles without Christ or opposite to Christ but only when he clearly and strongly remembers his Christian title and call. The next one, the goal of war. Uh, the question which are the legitimate goal of war uh, that we can justly strive to, what is a just goal of a just war, has many answers. Faith, freedom, justice, fatherland, people, etc. One of the writers, Walzer, claims that professional soldiers in war are guided by passion for victory. However, the argument that modern wars present is the struggle for survival for all soldiers more than purposeful action in not uh, without reason. Pure physical and biological survival is becoming the essence of war, not the, tie, not the fight for a higher spiritual cause because the modern man and uh, his community lost the deep spiritual meaning. Completely justified and the necessary war is uh, in the one that a Christian should wage on himself against his passions and sins. According, according to the spiritual law, only if, it, if that war is permanent, there will be no armed, no armed, uh, armed conflicts, but if it uh, it is permanent, that would inevitably lead to a war on God. purpose of war is an <clears throat> understanding that entered the Christianity from the ancient world and on the trial and uh, that thought violence should be kept on a minimum as little as it takes to reach satisfaction from the enemy. Mm. Uh, victory in war is not a value in itself, but a presumption of reaching higher causes. Celebrating of God is the essence of peace. And if anything stands in the place of celebrating the uh, peace is unsustainable and we can expect war sooner or later. The view that war is only legitimate if there is a reasonable chance of success, victory, and uh, if not, then we should pray for peace is not exclusive. The Orthodox Serbian history did not stick to that view much. On the contrary, deviations were often. And the leading thought was that the value that is defended is the utmost uh, uh, signi significance, not the certainty of success and victory. It means that the value of which uh, should be defended is criteria for estimating war.
slide nine, tension uh, between victory and honest struggle. Uh, we witnessed the absence of any mercy, honesty, and chivalry in modern armed conflict. Uprises, civil wars, anti-terrorist, anti-rebel operations, and others. The orthodox view is deep, deeply founded in the commandments and the revelation of God. For Christian rules, laws are only significant if they express the will of God. The Old Testament specifically asks for the rules of God to be strictly respect in war. Robbery, marauding, adultery, desecration of sanctity, or any other scene are an obstacle for victory in war and directly lead to defeat. Looting in war is explicitly forbidden. We find similar ideas, beliefs, and values in the Orthodox, Orthodox tradition of Serbs. The Saint Sava taught soldiers. They taught the soldiers to avoid violence and unjust taking and advised them uh, to be content with their salary, wives, and the uh, gifts of the emperor. Theodosius Basilicus attributes the, the verse of Saint John the Baptist addressed to the soldiers to Saint Sava. And two, uh, two slides more. I continue tension between victory and honest struggle. We find numerous examples in the scripture for how infidelity and immorality of military and people's leaders causes war and defeat. The scripture advises that weapons and the number of soldiers are not crucial for achieving victory, but spiritual and moral victory. You can find those messages through all sacral documents, that spiritual and moral factor is much more essential. There are no exceptions to the emphasis on obeying the rules of war and uh, merciful behavior, because from that feeling of just acting comes the faith in God's support and uh, in a faith in victory. According to Orthodox stance point, fairness in war is not a guarantee of victory, but is surely a condition. Uh, there is no dilemma that murder in war is a sin for Orthodox Christians, regardless of the higher and selfless moti motives like the love of fellow men uh, in a just defensive war. And now I am coming to some conclusions. Uh, I have two slides about conclusions. The first one would be that uh, the moral things in general in orthodoxy contain a higher political ideal bounded by the teaching of the New Testament about salvation not only personal, but the salvation of the entire Orthodox as spiritual communities. Through this ideal, as a key to the puzzle, can political thoughts and political acts be best understood, even when it comes to the issues of war and victory and defeat in war. Salvation is an ideal, creates every measure, pervades every decision. The concept of victory had and uh, still has a significant role in the Christian Orthodox view on war. Why? Because victory and defeat uh, were seen as a sign from God. Victory as a confirmation of justice, law and the truth and defeat as punishment for injustice, guiltiness, and lie. 
will of God is crucial and it is above everything uh, in the conflict of armed forces. So men are the masters of only causes of the wars, never the outcomes. Victory and defeat in war can be a logical consequence of what happened before and how a community, nature, uh, or a state acted, how truly uh, the rulers serve God. And that we come to close to my presentation. <laughs>